hello children in today's lesson in today's video we are going to learn the old clock shop the fourth story of a pact with the sun the story goes like this some points now we'll discuss it's a christmas eve and closing time for shops ray's old clock shop is still open two shoppers call at he, at this late hours so it's a christmas eve christmas eve means what the evening before means uh, the evening before any or uh, the christmas eve means what the be the evening before the christmas day okay that is christmas eve so we'll see now this story christmas eve had arrived at last minute shoppers were going home a thick and white sheet of snow lay over salt lake city usa yet the lights were still burning in the old clock shop as ray its old deaf owner worked on a clock he had sold that day see here christmas eve means the previous evening of the christmas that evening has arrived that christmas eve have had arrived and as last minute shopper were going home and it was the evening time the last minute time so everybody the shop shoppers the people those who shop they were going to their homes a thick white sheet of snow a snow lay over salt lake city usa here a thick white sheet of snow means what here the snows snow only the white snow that fall over the salt lake city usa on that city means here there was a snowfall <coughs> yet the lights were still burning in the cloak shop though it was evening time the lights were burning in the shop who was the owner of that shop rai it was a shop owner how was he he was old and deaf owner he could not he was old one and he could not listen or he could not hear properly and he was working on a cloak clock he was working on a clock he had sold that day okay then now having finished his work ray stood up and was on his way to the back room when a cold rush of air from the front door hit the back of his neck and he finished his work and he stood he stood up and he was around he was just uh, turned back to the room and at the same time a cold rush of air means a breeze cold air it came from the front door and he, the air hit at the back of his neck means neck so because of that cold uh, the cold air his neck his uh, the cold air hit his neck he turned to meet a last minute shopper but he his old wise eyes told him that this was not a shopper he saw two men one in his 20s and other closer to 50 the younger man remained at the door the older man approached the counter with no signs of friendliness in his eyes Ray was able to hide his growing fear as he slowly pushed a notepad and a pencil across the counter. So here, when after that cold breeze, he turned back. Ray turned back to the shop, the last minute shopper. Means it was the last minute shopper. Means the last shopper because after some time he was he was just about to close his shop. So he thought that this is the last shopper, person, last customer. Shopper means here customer. so here but he found that this customer this last customer is not he was old he was old but his wise eyes means he was wise also he he understood that this was the last man was not a shopper he was not actually a customer he saw that there were two men okay one man was around in his 20s means one man was about 20 years old and this another man was about to 50 years old closer to 50 means he was very close maybe he is uh, 51 years or 52 years or maybe 40 at 49 years old means very close to 50 years of age the younger man was re uh, remained at the door means the man who was around 20 years old he remained at the door and the older man the man who was around 50 years old he approached the counter he came to the counter of rise shop and he had no sign of friendliness in his eyes so as if he was not he was not friendly okay older man he was not friendly so ray was able to hide his growing fear though it was evening time he was afraid but he was able to find uh, sorry to hide his 
growing fear he, he did not want to show that he was afraid but he pushed a notepad and pencil across the counter but he ray pushed his notepad and pencil towards the uh, customer why why do you think he pushed his notepad and pencil because he was deaf person he could not listen so that he could that's why he gave that notepad and pencil to the customer so that he can write down whatever he wants he smiled at the unfriendly face and then pointed to his ears and shook his head from side to side a quick look of surprise changed the man's face as he studied the notepad then turned he said something to his friend then ray smiled at the unfriendly face means that to the customer he smiled at him and he pointed to his ears and he ray pointed to his ears that by showing that he was unable to listen unable to hear and a quick look of surprise changed the man's face the man's face also changed his expression changed when he saw the notepad and he turned to as if he wanted to say to say something to his friend so ray used the chance to look closely at the man paying attention to the shape of the of a gun and restless hand in the man's right coat pocket anger boiled within him but it was kept down by an inner voice that said be still he wrote on the notepad may i help you for the first time the older man looked directly at ray and smiled a cruel mocking smile they both understood why he was there why his friend remained at the door they looked like men who were down on their luck and were now ready to try something they would later be sorry about so here here ray used a chance to look close to the man so he looked at the man who was very close to him so he saw that he felt that he felt that there was something in his pocket in his right coat pocket and it looked like a gun it was this shape was like a gun and the restless hand in the man's right coat pocket so he felt that there is something on his in his right pocket and it may be a gun he felt like this so he became very angry ray became very angry but he himself kept very silent and himself he said be still be quiet he himself said he wrote on the notepad because the man the customer was not replying anything so he himself wrote on the notepad to the customer that may i help you he said he wrote on the notepad that may i help you then for the first time the old man looked directly at the ray when he read that sentence may i help you then the man directly looked at ray and then he smiled but here ray felt that smile was very cruel it was mocking smile it was very it was fake smile so they both ray as well as the customer they understood why he was there and why and why the man's friend who remained at the door he felt that something will now go something will happen uh, very bad with me and definitely these people are going to feel sorry about th- this their work afterwards the clock ticked on ray calmly wrote another message have you come to pick up a clock or a watch then he pointed to the loan board filled with hanging clocks and pocket watches he was not a pawn broker but at the same time couldn't say no to the needy people who placed their old watches or clocks before him for anything they could get he loaned more than he should they would be they would be there when uh, when the owners wanted them back at the same price he had paid with no interests so here the the clock ticked on means here it was evening time the clocks were ticking on their sounds so ray, ray again though there wasn't any communication but ray only started talking and means started writing so again ray again started uh, wrote something on a page what was that have you come to pick up a clock or a watch so he said that do you want to buy uh, any watch or a clock then the man pointed at the loan board as if he wanted a loan so he showed the man pointed he showed his finger towards the loan board hanging clocks but here ray was not a pawn broker here pawn broker means a person who keeps others belongings and give them loan but here at the same time but on the other hand he could not say no to the needy people wherever the people are in need he always used to help them so he used to keep their watches or clocks before him and giving them money 
so he loaned many people more than he should he could means more than he could he could he just loaned many things he gave money to the people more than he could uh, give so all the people they used to uh, get that money and do their work and after some days they used to return those money to ray and they used to take their own things or the clock or the uh, watches but here he did not take any interest also on the money then the older man seemed to feel a little easier took out his hand from his pocket and quickly looked at the watch on his wrist how much will you give me for this the man wrote so here the man took out his hand from the pocket and he showed the wrist watch to ray and he asked how much will you give me for this watch for this he asked how much will you give me for this watch the man wrote in the notepad ray noticed a little shame in the gray eyes looking at him the watch was nothing special and yet had great powers it was something to exchange a way out of a bad situation knowing that great need had brought the man to his shop in the first place ray asked how much do you need for it the reply came back on the notepad whatever it's worth so here the man when the man asked how much will you please how much will you give me for this watch then here ray felt ashamed why because he before some time he felt that the men were the men came here to rob him okay they may act some bad things before uh, with him and that's why he felt that he has uh, he has not understood them or understood their feelings so he felt some ashamed about him his own thought so he looked at the man and he said how much do you need for it how much do you want for for this watch again the man replied on notepad whatever it's worth whatever will be its price you can uh, give just please give me ray reached into his cash box pulled out a 50 dollar note and passed it into the man's hand as they shook hands ray looked into the man's eyes they seemed to say thank you here then ray go went to the cash box and he took out a 50 dollar note he took out 50 dollar note and he gave 50 dollars to the man and both of them they shook the they shake their hands and the man looked am, uh, at ray as if he wanted to say thank you to him they both knew the watch wasn't worth that much both of them they knew that the watch was not of the price of 50 dollars it was its worth its price was not of 50 dollar but still ray helped him by giving 50 dollars to the man the man wrote before turning to leave the man wrote i will be back to pick up it as soon as i can merry christmas the man at last where before going he wrote a message on his notepad to for ray that he will come back uh, to pick up or to take his uh, watch back as soon as possible and he wished ray merry christmas the little story ended on the half hour with the clocks striking all together the time pieces which had been looking on silently on the while rang out at the time with such a feeling that even ray thought he could hear them their sweet musical message was filled with hope the timeless message of peace on earth goodwill towards all was felt by the three men who stood in the old shop old clock shop so here here this story story was ended it was of half a uh, half hour story of at the clock shop old clock shop what happened he just this story shows that though that man was old he had fear about those people but at last when he came to know about the need of the the man he helped him on the occasion of christmas eve here the peace on earth goodwill towards all means when when the peace is on earth everywhere will be peace uh, the world will be peaceful if and uh, goodwills will be goodwills towards all means if we we think with good attitude towards all and the earth will be peaceful so this story happened to the old clock shop so here our story comes to end the old clock shop how the uh, shop owner that is ray helped the man in his, in his need okay
so here the lesson comes to an end so we'll see this and there are, you can write down the question answers from the uh, website we'll see another lesson in another video till then bye bye